know you mentioned on the phone you started smoking when you were 11. I've been smoking for a really, really okay. long How old time. are you now? I just barely turned 21. Okay. So you're Yay. still young. I'm still a baby. You are still a baby. You have plenty of time. Well, we had some nursing staff here over 10 years ago who created a prenatal smoking cessation program that was called First Step. We've been running this First Step program for 10 year or so years. So there was an opportunity for me to improve the program, you know, maybe tweak it a little bit. Put those together. And so how that will work is from, once you quit, we just meet once a month. And every, each month, if you test not smoking, then you get your voucher. So you can start collecting those all through your pregnancy and then for that whole first year after your babies are born. Not only did we wonder how we could actually motivate these women to quit, but how we could actually measure in a reliable way that they had quit, even if they told us they had, just to back it up. So around the time we were considering this, we actually received some funding through a quality improvement initiative to work on a project, and this just seemed like the perfect fit for that. All the members from our project team kind of got together and we had different ideas about what we were wanting to, to work on and how we wanted them to improve. But we went through a series of specific questions that helped us focus and write something specific. So things like what population are we targeting specifically? What is it that we want to have happen? What's our timeline for getting things done? And then how are we gonna measure success? The QI really makes you think about it all the way through and okay, you're consistently and constantly analyzing what you're doing and all oh, this isn't quite working. After that first initial appointment, how to make it more consistent, consistent yeah. Okay. Sometimes with my appointments, when I'm not having them show up, I'm like, okay, so, you know, it was important to stop and look at that and say, okay, what can we do? And when we did our fishbone and kind of drilled down and said, okay, I think it's this. So, so we put that in our busy schedule or is that its own little branch? Like, I think it's its own relationship. Yeah, yeah, right relationship. I think it's big enough. Are they nervous about anything else besides haven't quit? And well, there could be just the legitimate, like they lost my number or, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they just keep forgetting because, you know, the busier you get, especially after you've had a baby. It's kind of like asked you to look at this and then um, think about those things that are kind of the biggest factors. And so we came up with business cards, have business cards printed to give to them. This card, it's got my number on it. You can text me on the cell phone, that's my cell. The other phone is my office phone. Okay. So if texting worked for you, you can text me on that number. So how important is the process map to you? Really, it's, well, so important that I got a tattoo. We had the main coordinator of the program. They knew how it worked, and they were real effective at thinking, well, if I show up at this visit and they're not prepared to quit, this is where I'll go with that. But we never had it mapped out before. It was always just in the mind of the person running the program, which became a real challenge whenever we had turnover and someone new started. It was like starting from scratch. Well, how am I going to make this work? Now we don't have that problem because we've gone through the process mapping to figure out on visit one, this is what we'll do, visit two. Probably the biggest change is how we collect our data. We're using that, either the smokalyzer test or the saliva test. Well, going through that Plan Do Study Act, we're continually looking at the process. We plan it, we implement it, and then we check to make sure it's working. And if it's not, we go back and we revisit some of the issues that may be occurring. Self-report data is what we'd been using before, so we'd visit the moms and they'd say, yeah, I quit, or no, I didn't. Then we'd be like, all right, you quit, good job. We had a tremendous quit rate, but then we realized that that might not be the most reliable way to measure whether a person has actually quit or not. And interestingly enough, when we first got our smokalizer, we first purchased one, we took the women that I had currently, and we had, I think it was about 87% non-disclosure. So 87% of those women said they had quit when they really hadn't. Pregnant moms were recruited in various ways, but it, w it was tough to get that participation. But now with the new 
um, diaper voucher incentive that that our program has now utilized, we're able to see a lot more um, individuals that are, are are interested in in actually taking that leap of effort to try to quit. Since we're revamping the program, we created a new brand or a new name for the program uh, now called Baby Steps. Ultimately, we want to help these mothers who are these pregnant moms basically quit smoking and one thing we learned through this quality improvement process was we were leaving out a vital part of that and that was the fathers of the babies um, whether it be their spouse or a partner and by including them we've been able to reach higher quit rates because before these moms would those who successfully quit would typically come back to a household where that was still occurring, the smoking. And now we're trying to eliminate that so they come back to a supportive environment and they quit together and a lot more success that way. It's been extremely positive. It's helped me out a lot. Yeah. It's been a lot nicer about smoking. Yeah, I feel healthier. And, yeah. yeah, a lot more money. <laughs> yeah, more money. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want my baby to see me smoking. I watched my mom do it, and I think that's why I smoke so much. My mom and my uncle. So hopefully if I quit before they're born, they won't want to do it. If you can get one person, just even one person to do it, that makes it possible for everybody else to do it. You know, I think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to be a good program. They're needing my support, and and appreciating it and so it's neat to see these these families and these women impacted in their you know their lives changing in a positive way and so yeah at the end of the day I think well it is pretty cool that I have a job where I can help people so I like it mm -hmm.